Mentoring and instruction during the pandemic, transitions and best practices presentation by Professor Christina Salvudis, St. John's University Research Month, Spring 2021, dedicated to all my amazing students and mentors past and present, and to the fellow for thought mentoring family for their dynamic support during the pandemic, a fellow for thought educational production. Since the start of the pandemic, students and faculty have faced an enormous number of transitions that transformed the landscape of mentoring and instruction, possibly for good. This presentation will outline key transitions and best practices identified in 2020 and set in motion since then to ensure a positive pivot for students, faculty and other members of the campus community. Here. Instruction refers to in-class teaching while mentoring refers to supplementary guidance beyond the classroom. For example, internship directors, departmental advisors, etc. Historical research for this presentation is outlined in Salvudis Educational Engineering in April 2019. Recent assessments are derived from research initiatives conducted through fellow for thought Hellenic mentoring initiative as well as a series of discussions and interviews. Please see the special recognition slide at the conclusion of this presentation. Keywords include mentors, advisory services, productivity, positive pivot, collaboration, empowerment. Categories for this topic are higher education, instructional design, humanities. This presentation is considered suitable for general audiences, but is specifically designed to address the needs of undergraduate and graduate students, professional groups and related service providers. In complex university settings, under normal circumstances, building a sustainable learning community typically requires several key factors that apply broadly to mentoring and instruction of STEM and humanities majors across the board. 1. Precise educational engineering. 2. Technological support. 3. Administrative support. 4. Supplementary support. 5. Advisory support. 6. Timely and consistent access to resources. Precise educational engineering, or instructional design, is based on the Aristotelian principles of ethos, logos, and pathos that shapes content knowledge in a manner that will appeal to the target audience. Technological support refers to services that ensure efficient and sustainable instructional design prior to the start of the semester. It also refers to effective troubleshooting and critical repairs required during the semester. Administrative support ensures that faculty and students have the tools and space needed to create an effective teaching and learning community. Administrative support is meant to provide reliable advisory and mediation services to students and faculty in a timely manner. Supplementary support refers to all the additional services needed to ensure that students are not overwhelmed by external factors beyond the instructor's control. These services are also in place to ensure that students feel safe and secure knowing that they have timely, reliable advocates as well as proper accommodations in place for successful progression throughout the semester. Such services include student services, academic affairs, office of disability services, student health services, libraries, resource centers, writing centers, tutorial support, public safety, facilities, and more. Advisory support refers to open, fluid, and timely correspondence with deans, departmental advisors, 
and mentors about how ongoing coursework fits into the big picture of the student's academic goals, desired career path and current bottleneck challenges. Timely and consistent access to resources refers to an interrupt on access to email, course shells, and other key resources needed to ensure that students and teachers have consistent exposure to all the above for the duration of the academic year or semester. Student engagement outside the classroom is essential to building a sense of campus community. Additionally, making external mentoring internship opportunities available beyond the campus has become part of the standard norms for the college experience, for example, study abroad, internships, and so on. Standing concepts of rapid instructional design, or RID, at most college campuses and educational foundations were abruptly challenged with the enforcing intensity of the pandemic, which caused a combination of chaotic and staggered closures of face-to-face -face programming, study abroad opportunities, internships, print publications, team meetings, and more established paradigms for student engagement, such as clubs, study groups, etc., were abruptly halted to address the more urgent needs of health services, displacement from existing classroom spaces, and so on. Institutions that boasted of massive libraries and diversified campus life were suddenly closed and off limits. Over the past year, these and many other key transitions have taken effect. For the first time in nearly a century, institutions across the world were called upon to mobilize and rapidly assess student and faculty needs, community resources, etc., and drastically revamp all instructional protocols across the board so they might continue to function at least at partial capacity. As one would imagine, this proved to be a nearly Promethean challenge for all those involved in the process of providing reliable and effective remote instruction and advisory services, especially at smaller colleges and instructional facilities with minimal technological resources. At most colleges and universities, Immediate needs, or key transitions, included 1. RID faculty training 2. RID tech staff and resources 3. RID student training 4. Improved standardized protocols 5. Supplementary resources Prioritizing essential student needs has become an integral part of ensuring a positive pivot to the norm of campus life that needs to be sustained during the long months of the pandemic. Immediate needs included the following. RID faculty training is the immediate and comprehensive training of faculty who have never taught online and in some cases had never corresponded with students online, to enable them to continue teaching their courses. Next, RID Tech Staff and Resources is a critical reassessment of staff duties to compensate for the unprecedented increase of calls, technical issues and student faculty needs as entire campuses transition to remote instruction. It also refers to the efficacy of existing instructional platforms and tools for fluid RID and student-teacher access. Lastly, RID student training is the immediate training of students who have never taken online courses before. It also refers to the critical assessment of learning disabled student needs by disability services and related advisory departments. Improved standardized protocols refers to the critical reassessment of existing standardized protocols for everything from service contracts and grade submission to advisory reporting and correspondence, which had to be revamped immediately as students, faculty, and staff were instructed to work from home, some under restrictive quarantine. Supplementary resources refers to the need for advisement beyond the classroom. 
The need for these resources boomed suddenly as reported cases of students and faculty struggling under the burden of increased stress and obligations became overwhelming. Universities with pre-established teaching and learning centers, or TLC, have generally fared better than those contending with these challenges through inexperienced ad hoc committees. In New York, private schools seem to respond more quickly than city schools with regard to closures, standardized training and protocol establishment. Admirably, Columbia University, St. John's University, and New York University were among the top five most proactive schools to respond and mobilize students, faculty, and staff, which included campus members who were working or studying abroad at the time that the pandemic notifications began. As most smaller organizations started to shut down during the mass panic, the fellow for Thought Hellenic Mentoring Initiative took particular care to immediately implement the following transitional steps. First, they transitioned all instructional seminars, publications, and resources to an optimized, more streamlined and interactive, online platform. Next, they assessed immediate and long-term community needs. Next, they assessed gaps in their current resources. Lastly, they formed a series of strategic partnerships with like-minded philanthropic organizations to address urgent faculty training and student mentoring needs. Philip Forthought's work serves as a small-scale model for the systemic transition for effective R.I.D. or remote teaching and learning, with zero days of interrupted service, closures, or cancellations. This team of volunteers work diligently to preserve all programs and publications with seamless transition to an optimized online platform to best serve young professionals and related specialists in their local, regional, national, and global community network of 375,000 people. By using collaborative resources, Philo Forthought was able to stay open even during the summer season when they normally closed for races, to best serve the many students, faculty, college administrators, student advocates, and business owners within their international network, without pause, from January 2020 to the present. Critical new programs include Student Networking and Advocacy Program, or SNAP, Young Professional Empowerment Seminar Series, Healthy Lifestyle Seminar Series, COVID Resource Center, Strategic Partnership Program, Critical Counseling, Coaching, Assessment and Training, Social Engagement Activities, including their NetCafe Socials, Zoom to Greece Summer Dance Series, Cultural Videos, and more, supplementary outreach, via platforms like Handshake, Crumbsbase, Benevity, LinkedIn, etc. New programming was selected and developed based on survey assessment of immediate community needs among students, faculty, advisors, mentors, professionals, business owners, etc within the Philo Forthought Network in addition to consultation with seasoned programming directors and educational and technical specialists from a variety of top universities, including Columbia, St. John's, Pace, CUNY Hunter Baruch and Queen's College, ACGDE, UTH Larissa, and more. These new programs were created to supplement fellow Forthought's existing initiatives and publications which include free HYP Life monthly newsletter, free advisory videos on their YouTube channel, free advisory articles, job boards, referrals, 
3 to 4 credit internship program, college bound young scholars program, annual spring symposium, annual awards and recognition ceremony, held in collaboration with the New York State Assembly and the New York State Attorney General's Office, guest lectures and training sessions at colleges and universities, mentor and support at schools, community centers and professional organizations, community building activities, social media outreach campaigns, and supportive recognition of progressive milestones among their young professional prodigies, colleagues, and so on. Philip Fonthard's original mission is to provide sound advisement and resources to emerging young professionals from marginalized communities. The concept is derived from a combination of Aristotelian teachings and the idea of philotimo that is deeply ingrained in the fabric of classic and modern Greek community. Comparative conclusions derived from research of colleges and universities across North America and Europe include the following. The coming academic year will determine which of the current best practices are the most effective. In the meantime, most major campuses have now taken adequate precautions to ensure the safety of their students, faculty and staff. Campuses have also made the difficult transitions to more reliable online platforms and started streamlining new policies and protocols for online instruction which can easily be applied to future hybrid and face-to-face -face courses. There are still perceivable gaps in the uniformity of instructional access and student faculties in maneuvering the online platforms for formal courses. Funding also seems to be a struggle due to lower enrollment and retention levels. As far as the small-scale instructional model, Philo for Thought has been more productive and increased its ability to reach and assist more students outside of their geographic hub in New York City. The team has taken the incentive to connect with more service providers to enable stronger collaborative programming for their prodigies. Overall, Philo Forthought has engaged in much higher levels of productivity through remote research and mentoring during the pandemic, establishing a new norm for productivity and community engagement and social outreach. There are currently fewer gaps in the uniformity of instructional access since all team members and mentors share equal ease in maneuvering the online platforms being used for video chats, online programming, etc. While there are occasional updates requiring slight maintenance, it is nothing out of the ordinary and the team has received positive reviews about events and publications which is encouraging new local and global collaborations. Funding has struggled due to excessive free enrollment and programming. However, if federal funding is granted the program can continue on. Cohesive management and instructional goals is the key to success for this small non-profit. The community has already expressed its gratitude for fellow for thoughts contributions to the positive pivot and hope to see a continuation of this successful venture in future years. In closing, Professor Salvovis would like to thank all those who contributed to the research, advisement and technical support of this year's CTL presentation, namely, Professors Laverty, Lowe's, GU and Rousseau of Columbia University, Ms. Liotopoulos and Professors Papa Ioannou and Solanki as well as Mr. Lustani, Georgopoulos, Rapendakis, from the programming and instructional team at Philo for Thought, Mrs. Ruse and her team at Ruse Advisors, Mr. August as well as Professors Kennedy, Gaffney, and Weber of St. John's University, and, of course, the St. John's University CTL team that made this year's event possible.
As we say in Greek, ευχαριστώ παρά πολύ. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the research and development team at Philo for Thought via email. Info at Philo for Thought Delia. O. R. G. You have watched a Philo for Thought educational production. For similar videos, please visit W. 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 Philo for Thought. R. G.